Supercapacitors to me, they're, they're absolutely fascinating. And we don't really talk about them all that often, but supercaps could potentially hold some revolutionary breakthroughs for electric cars that I think people just aren't seeing coming. There is a breakthrough plastic supercapacity. You think, right, a supercap made of plastic, surely it's not going to last for very long. But apparently, in the laboratory, it hits 70,000 charge cycles and offers 100 times conductivity. So what does this actually mean in the real world? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. I've done a fair few videos about supercapacitors, as you know, over the past four years. At least, I believe at least 12. Might be more, though. It's hard to remember when you've done 6,500 videos. Researchers at UCLA in the United States have developed a new method for growing PDOT or P E D O T nanofibers with exceptional energy storage capabilities. Now, nanofibers are one of those things that I think artificial intelligence are going to reveal as being a breakthrough, but really potentially a breakthrough material that we can use for lots of different sources. The advance could lead to supercapacitors that can meet some energy storage demands as the world transitions to renewable sustainable energy production, said the researchers in a press release. Now, this is one of many different breakthroughs we've seen supercaps over the last 12 months. Better supercapacitors are one route to reduced dependence on fossil fuels, say the researchers. It can have potential applications in hybrid and electric vehicles, portable electronics, and even in energy storage batteries. PDOT, P-E-D-O-T, an abbreviation for poly 34 ethyl. Anyway, I'm not going to try and pronounce this word. I'll put it on the screen for you. It belongs to a class of plastics known as conductive polymers, which can conduct electricity. It is also found in touchscreens, organic solar cells, and electrochromic devices such as smart windows that switch from light to dark at the press of a button. However, its use in energy storage has been limited due to the low conductivity and surface area of commercially available PDOT. The UCLA team overcame these limitations by developing a unique vapor phase growth process that produces vertical PDOT nanofibers resembling dense grass. The material's unique vertical growth allows us to create PDOT electrodes that store far more energy than traditional PDOT, said Mayor El Cady, corresponding author and UCLA material scientist. And guys, this has me salivating a little bit. I'm thinking to myself, electrodes. Okay, could these electrodes be used in traditional lithium-ion batteries? And they potentially could. Electric charge is stored on the surface of the material and traditional PDOT films don't have enough surface area to hold very much charge. We increase the surface area of PDOT and thereby increase its capacity enough to build a supercapacitor. Supercapacitors actually store energy by accumulating electrical charge on their surface, allowing for rapid charging and discharging. And this makes them ideal for applications requiring quick bursts of power, such as re regen braking in electric cars. However, here's the thing. It's been challenging to create materials with sufficient surface area to hold large amounts of energy. The increased surface area is crucial because it allows for much more energy to be stored in the same volume of material, significantly boosting the performance of supercapacitors said the research and the press release. The UCLA team, their PDOT, they say that their PDOT nanofibers demonstrate exceptional performance in this regard. And these nanofibers apparently exhibit a remarkable conductivity that's 100 times higher than commercial PDOT products and an electrochemically active surface area four times greater than traditional PDOT. This translates to a storage charge capacity of more than 4,600 millifarads per square centimeter, which is much higher than what the researchers were getting before. It's essentially um, a remarkable uh, breakthrough for them. In addition, the material demonstrated exceptional durability lasting more than 70,000 charge cycles. Now, we think that in the laboratory testing situations, when batteries are charged, we often people will say, well, that's just in the laboratory. It's not going to last that long in real life. But actually, electric car batteries in real life have been proven 
on average to last 40% longer versus laboratory test conditions. Because in the laboratory, they're, off, they're generally charging and discharging them to 100% and then back down to zero at a really fast speed. So 70,000 is a remarkable result. The exceptional performance and durability of our electrodes shows great potential for graphene PDOT use in supercapacitors, and I'm thinking potentially traditional lithium-ion batteries as well, that can help our society meet our energy needs, said Richard Kainer, corresponding author of the study. The breakthrough holds significant implications for the future of energy storage. The development of high-performance PDOT nanofibers could lead to more efficient batteries, more efficient supercapacitors, and this in turn could enable faster charging electronics, longer range electric vehicles, and improve renewable energy storage solutions, say these researchers. But there is some sort of significant problems that I see in this research. So hopefully you've stuck around till now and you can see uh, an issue here with the reporting here. Now, these guys have said, right, that breakthrough plastic supercapacitors hit 70,000 charge cycles. But there's a big problem here because capacitor life is actually measured, measured in hours, not cycles. Here's an example. Manufacturers of electrolyte, electrolytic supercapacitors specify the design time for lifetime at the maximum rated ambient temperature, usually 105 degrees Celsius. This design time lifetime can vary from as little as 1,000 hours to 10,000 hours or more. This is the problem with supercapacitors. It's not necessarily the number of charges, it's actually the number of hours. The reason for that is because a capacitor can cycle tens of times per second, every second. Therefore, 70,000 cycles is actually not all that many. It's more than before, but not enough. All they've done though, what that means is really ultimately admitted that researchers at UCLA have developed a new type of capacitor that can last for, well, maybe a day, potentially. So we're a long way from seeing pilot production lines. And that's what really you need to see for this technology to last, to work. But my big takeaway from all that is actually a positive. It sounds negative what I'm saying here, and it is a little bit. But the positive thing is here, this technology, these new nanofibers, I, I don't see why they couldn't be used in traditional batteries. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe there will be. Maybe this kind of technology will be seen by companies like Tesla or BYD, and they'll be able to initial, you know, potentially integrate this kind of researchers research into their future battery technology. What are your thoughts? Let me know what you think in the comments.